Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to No Final Bell. Um, full gear just happened recently. It was yeah. this past Sunday. Of course, we are recording on Wednesday, and the episode will probably be coming out a little bit later than usually, maybe an hour or so later than than normal. But okay. um, we just wanted to make sure that this um, episode got out uh, on time before Thanksgiving, <laughs> before Black Friday. I know everybody will be busy and not really probably want to watch us on Thanksgiving or Black Friday, but hey, you know, you get to watch us on Wednesday or whenever yeah, you want to instead. But uh, we're going to be talking about all full gear here, yeah. so you better be ready. Um, a lot of interesting moves that we kind of figured, and a big, big signing that yeah. cha is going to change the whole aspect of the pro wrestling world. Um, but we're going to start with a zero hour. Zero hour starts off with Eddie Kingston and Jay Lethal facing off for the ROH World Championship, by the way. And, um, of course, you know, Stokely Hathaway is really trying to make sure that Eddie Kingston is no longer the world champion because he doesn't see him fit as the ROH World Champion. Well, I hate to say it, Stokely, but you're going to have to just live with it just a little bit longer. Um, I mean, it wasn't a terrible match. I mean, um, I think... A lot of the goons were trying to get involved in this match. I mean, Jay Lethal was trying to hit a uh, lethal injection in the match. And, fortunately, Eddie Kingston got him with the Urikin. Yeah. Um, they were and, trying to everything they could to make sure that Jay Lethal left out of there the ROH World Champion. Yeah. But, unfortunately, that was not the case. As Eddie Kingston um, beats Jay Lethal to retain the ROH World Championship... So, um, but with the help of Ortiz, yeah. Ortiz did come out there and help out Eddie Kingston, just like you know back in the day when they were um, homies. Yeah, um, it's not a so, bad move. I don't think. Speaking of Eddie Kingston, uh, <clears throat> on this past ROH on Honor Club, he took on uh, Dalton Castle, and. It was actually a pretty good match. Um, also, speaking of last Thursday's uh, Honor Club Ring of Honor episode taping, we did get confirmation of what they are going to do with the television title. So, we all know that Samoa Joe vacated on Dynamite. Of course, and we'll talk about kinda, Samoa Joe literally yeah. in two bullets from now. <laughs> um, but because of what happened with uh, Samoa Joe vacating the television title, it kind of left uh, Tony Khan and Ring of Honor in a bit of a, not slump, but like kind of just, you know, in a small little rut of like, okay, well, what are we going to do now that Joe vacated? So... Uh, he mentioned on that episode and, you know, episodes going forward, but I watched last episode and I'm like, I didn't, they didn't mention anything about it on the episode. So maybe it'll start this Thursday, like, you know, or I shouldn't, it's probably not going to be, well, maybe. It said next week that, like, they're having matches and everything, so maybe there is an episode this week, even though it's Thanksgiving. For what? Um, uh, Ring of Honor. Oh, um, yeah, I have no idea. <clears throat> but regardless, um... I mean, they still recorded... Be... I mean, they still recorded Well, yeah, I know that, because it's not live. Week. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, regardless... Those matches are all... So there's going to be a series of matches that... Of eliminator matches that are going to lead to a big match at Final Battle to determine a new television champion. It's going to be a six-way survival of the fittest. And they're... Like I said, the eliminator matches, the winners of those will go on to compete at final battle in that six way survival of the fittest. Okay. Um Yeah, I mean I think that's a great concept for final battle. I mean, which is gonna be what, December tenth? December fifteenth. 
Okay. Friday. My bad. Um, However, what will be that week of the 10th is um, Final Resolution for Impact Wrestling. It will be Mm. the 9th, actually. Right. So, So, yeah. um... Two weeks in a row getting uh, Impact and Ring of Honor. Yeah, uh, Final Battle is going to be an Honor Club. So whoever is yeah. um, subscribed to Honor Club, you will not have to pay extra, which mm-hmm. is nice. And, um, of course, later on in December is World's End, a very yep. new pay-per-view mm-hmm. of AEW, which usually they're done. Usually they go full gear and then right off to Revolution, but that is not going to be the case this year. They are, no slowing down um, on the build to Revolution. Well, the cool thing with World's End is there is a Continental Classic. Um, the 12 competitors have been announced. I don't know them all. Um, I know... A lot of it is it's, it's me... Swerve Strickland, Adam Hangman, uh, Brian Danielson. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> let me see here. While Marty brings it up, um, how about we go on to the next match on the Zero Hour? Uh, we had Claudio Castagnoli and Buddy Matthews, and honestly, I mean, I guess it makes sense. You know, they got the whole thing with the BCC and the House of Black going on with each other, and they seem to be on. And so it seemed like, okay, so um, I guess before we really go on to it, the 12 competitors, Marty? Yeah, so um, there is a, so real quick, too, there is a Gold League and a Blue League. Mm -hmm. The Gold League is John Moxley, Swerve Strickland, Mark Briscoe, Roosh, Jay Lethal, and Switchblade Jay White. And then in the Blue League, we have Brian Danielson, Andrade, Brody King, Claudio Castagnoli, Eddie Kingston, and Daniel Garcia. I wonder what's going to come out of this. If it, like say like if somebody like wins it all, something tells me it's going to be Brian Danielson. <laughs> hate to say it. More than likely, I, I think Brian Danielson <laughs> is going to be. Well, he was the first one that was going to enter in, in it. I think he's going to be the one that's ultimately going to win it. And also, it's happening starting tonight. later tonight. Yeah. Um, as part of the tournament itself. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably be watching it. Why not? Um, but the thing is, is that um, I can't remember. Was there like a championship that they or that they said that you know would be crowned out of this? See, I think so. The person, the, honestly, I don't <clears throat> mind another championship. But the problem is, is but, that you're gonna have way too many. Well, here's it. the thing: if it's like the Owen Hart Cup, yeah, but then it seems stupid, you know. What I would like for this to happen is not even like a G1 or anything like that. What I would love to see out of this tournament is whoever wins gets a future shot at the world championship. Well, it's funny you that would make that more because sense because I'm pretty sure that's what the G1 tournament, like the cul- the culmination, ends up being. Besides, like you win this giant trophy because I believe that to be you- honest with you, like. Yeah, Brian Danielson deserves to win it all and then get a future title opportunity, especially with it being his last year. I think 2024 is going to be technically his last year of competing. Full um, time, yeah. So, well, I think he's actually going to retire afterwards, to be honest with you. That seems mm-hmm. like what they're Maybe. kind of leading towards anyway. Um, but it could always be part time. I, I do like the concept of it. It adds something new to AEW. It gets a lot of guys you really don't see on AEW competing against each other more often. Um, should Brian Danielson win it? Probably not, but I feel like that's going to be the end goal. I mean, especially with guys like John Moxley, like Jay White, yeah. guys, you know, that could I mean, use it. For- sake i mean jay white just competed against mjf and we'll talk about that later on in their main event um and there were some weird things that happened before that happened that we'll talk about but uh let's go on to this next match i know we started it but we're actually going to go into it claudio castanoli and buddy matthews of course we know everything that's happened with bcc and house of black as the late they seem to be at, at odds end um yeah. eventually i would like to see like a trios type of match heading into um, World's End or some kind of aspect. You gotta do something with those World Trios tag team titles. They didn't get defended on yeah. full gear. 
So I would like for like maybe them to face off against each other, and whoever wins. Yeah, faces that didn't off make the... a lot of sense. That like the acclaimed and Daddy Ass didn't. Uh... Yeah, they were off the card. They were off the the um they weren't even main on card. The they were not on the yeah. the zero hour. Um, so it just seemed <laughs> weird that like you keep them off, and you know they've been almost putting them on the line almost every single week that they've been on. And then you have even seen them on TV, even I don't think I don't think they were on Diamond. I don't think they were on Collision or Rampage to my knowledge. They could have been, but I don't know. I didn't watch them. But they weren't even anywhere on full gear. So I'm thinking in my mind is like, I would think that they would have to be on World's End. And then to my knowledge, you have BCC and the House of Black kind of at ends. What I would like to see out of it is not even a match at World's End. What I would like to see is them facing off, and whoever wins gets a title oppor- a World Trios Tag Team title opportunity. I- I'd rather it not be the House of Black, because we've seen House of Black, we've seen they claim the daddy ass before. I mean, sh- for shits and giggles, that's who the House of Black um, and daddy ass, I think, Beat to get the World Trios Tag Team Titles was the House of Black anyway. So I rather I rather yeah, not had the House of Black beat them to get their titles back. Just yeah, saying. that wouldn't make. I rather lot. have BCC, but I know we're getting a little off track here. But um, <laughs> I guess there's not really much to talk about this match itself. I mean, Claudio Castagnoli beats Buddy Matthews. There's it was not... a very physical match. As is to be expected with really any Claudio Castagnoli match. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, you, you said it yourself, like, you, ever since he came, came into the AEW world, he, he seems to be a lot more physical, and I, I've seen it. Yeah. He does seem to be a lot more physical. You want to know why? Because Claudio Castagnoli is a fucking pro wrestler, not a sports entertainer. That That's going to show you, WWE. That's why you shouldn't turn guys that are pro wrestlers into sports entertainers, because it doesn't... It doesn't go well. I mean, look at what happened to Mystico. They tried to water down his style, and they tried, he, you know, they tried to have him learn a new, like, kind of lucha libre style that he just couldn't adapt to. Not to mention, he always kept botching everything, which was not entirely his fault. Right, you know, and now the mask that they gave him, he, he couldn't see a damn thing out of it. And now he's what Dridlistico? No, he's back to Mystico in CMLL. Yeah, so it, it, it's sad. Yeah, the original Sin Cara too. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but uh, so to your point earlier with Dridlistico, no, he played Mystico. When Sin, when Mystico, the original Mystico, was in WWE, Dralistico was Mystico in CMLL. Then Mystico got released from WWE. He became Mysticis after yeah. that, and then you know it led to this whole like thing of you have Mysticis, you have Coristico, you have Dralistico. Right, and Very then um, Walt, MJF was looking for a partner to defend those ROH World Tag Team titles, and it ended up being Samoa Joe, which we kind of figured that was yeah. going to be the case. Although there was really no build-up to it. There really I mean, wasn't. I really like, think that... The whole... Well, build, well there, like, there could well, have been. Think about it. Well, yeah, that's true. There could have been a collision there, or rampage. Because the thing about it is, like... Yeah, we didn't watch anything, so it's like maybe he picked him on like uh, Rampage or Collision or Dynamite, and then like you know because I feel MJF like it was probably one of those... was like, all right, you know what, I'm running out of options. Fine, Joe, you can be my partner tomorrow night. But um, it, it definitely got interesting because I mean, MGF <clears throat> was um. You know, doing his his, his moves, and then Samoa was Joe was to trying hit, to. He wanted to hit the kangaroo kick, but Samoa Joe stopped it from happening. Uh, they did a, a double muscle buster. Yes, or yeah. attempted to do a double muscle buster yeah. um, together, but the guns really tried everything they're darnest. You know, 
I don't mind that MGF is defending these titles without Adam Cole, but, like, something has to give. Like, eventually, you know, you would think that he's going to be losing them. Um, before we get on to everything, um, the devil. I really want to update it. I, I know why we we said who we really thought. I think I have we have a very big definitive answer, and I don't know if anybody else has come out and said this at all. But I I think that you know if, if not if they have cool if they haven't you're gonna hear hear first. I really seriously think, and I know a lot of people do not want to hear this, but I really think that Adam Cole has got to be the devil. I think yeah. that. It makes sense because you have three mass assailants. Who could be the three mass assailants? The Roderick Strong, uh, Matt Taven, Mike and Mike Bennett. Bennett. Makes the sense, kingdom. right? Three mass assailants and then the devil. Why does this make sense? Because Adam Cole used to be in the kingdom back yeah. in the day. Roderick Strong, of course, it was you know in the undisputed era with well, um, the thing Adam about Cole. It is the, the, it you know, makes sense though with Roderick Strong because the Kingdom have been looking after him. Yes, of the, course. With the whole like next strong thing, which by the way, speaking of that, um, I did see on Collision that Roderick Strong could have actually broken his neck, damn near, because of a botched Spanish fly from Action Andretti. Hmm, of course. And uh, during that whole exchange, people were actually chanting, like, neck strong at, uh, Roddy. So... Right, but, I mean... Yeah, ultimately with everything that happened, um, yes, Samoa, Joe, and MJF do beat the guns to retain the ROH World Tag Team titles off the distraction from Adam Cole, which Adam Cole's music just suddenly started to play, and everybody's like, holy crap, Adam Cole's back. Um, of course, you know, it with um, crutches and everything like yeah. that going down the stage. Um, and then afterwards, the guns were like, you know what? We're going to take advantage of this. We're going to make sure that J.Y. doesn't have to face off against MJF and will ultimately, you know, be handed the world championship. And that's what it was trying to be. So the guns beat down MJF after the match with a chair to the left leg. Yeah, they pulmonized him. Um, and it was taken out in the ambulance. Um, it was later announced that Adam Cole would take o take the place of MGF for in a world championship match later on tonight, or later on in the main event. And it was crazy. I'm thinking in my mind is how is a one legged man going to defend a world heavyweight championship against Jay White, who is fully healthy and have no injuries at all? Hey man, he's going to try to do everything he can to take it out I that did leg. Say, hey. Adam Cole was was attempting to be was going to attempt to be a one legged man in that, in an ass kicking contest. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, he was literally gonna put. Um... Hey, he made that promise to MJF too. So, <laughs> you know, you don't. A, a true friend never breaks a promise. Yeah. Although, until until although... until the devil appears and realizes that he's been you know. He's been targeting MJF this well, whole see, entire time. Here's the thing, too. Where the hell was Adam Cole when Roderick Strong needed his needed his help when he damn near broke his neck in real life? Nowhere. Yeah. He shows up for Max, but he can't show up for Roderick Strong. What kind of friend is Adam Cole? Damn it. Making well, making Roderick Strong think that you know he's truly friends with MGF. In reality, he's actually friends with Roderick Strong in the Kingdom. Because you know, what they want you to think though. It, it's what still. It's what he, makes he's sense. Still, he's still not faithful to Roderick Strong. I mean, he will be eventually. It just all, all has to play out in the storyline. But unfortunately, that storyline is on back hold because of the Adam Cole injury. I hate to say it, if it wasn't for the Adam Cole injury, I'm pretty sure the devil would have shown up already. It probably would have happened yeah. right then and there at full gear. Probably, yeah. Which, even though Adam Cole was there and on crutches, how come that angle couldn't have happened? Makes me wonder. 
That's why I'm thinking it might happen at. We probably Worlds. don't want to end it too soon. I think it's gonna happen at, it, at Worlds it, End. I feel like it would happen. It would be too soon to end that, especially with, you know, the whole. World End. I feel like makes more sense because of the whole, you know, 2024 thing. Yeah, with they got a, they're gonna have a storyline. Yeah, gonna, he, he's gonna find out that it was really Adam Cole that was a double. Well, see, here's the th- here's what all. I here's what I predict that MJF is going to lose to whoever he fights at World's End. I think it's gonna be some Mojo. I don't and think it's gonna then, be Wardlow. And then, uh, literally. After everything, the devil comes out. Granted, it would probably be like on the crutches, maybe not. But um, I think by then he probably should need it and just be in the walking boot. Well, at least that see, was the that's hope. the thing. Is like, how would Adam Cole be able to trick MJF into thinking it was somebody else? Plus, there's also another month from now, and I, I bet you by then he won't need the crutches he'll probably just be in the walking boot yeah or damn near out of the walking boot by then so i mean there's yeah, still time maybe. there's still time for it but yeah. with the mass assailants come out around and surround the ring afterwards oh and then you get, yeah and then, you, and then adam cole isn't there and then ends up you know or or better yet the devil comes out or the you lights, hear adam or, cole's music and like the devil kind of like you know, uh, looks out to the to the stage, thinking like, "Oh, Adam Cole is gonna come out," but then next thing you know, like Adam Cole's music stops. He faces the hard cam, takes the devil mask off. It's him. And then he's like, "What the fuck? I'm not huh. your friends." You know, type of thing, because you know, you know how MJF yeah. is when well, it's no, pay per view. What I what I feel like uh, Adam uh, MJF would say. He would look at Adam Cole and he'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? What the fuck, Adam? I thought we were friends. So, I thought you were a member of Chacho for life. <laughs> but, yeah. And then, you know, the whole... And then that's how... And then that's... Adam Cole would probably, sh- like, super kick uh, MJF or, you know, or, something. Or, or, and then or what, I can the see, what I can see... What if the mass assailants come out, distract a ref, somehow the lights go out, the devil is in the ring, pulls off the mask, ends up being Adam Cole, super oh, kicks cost. super kicks MJF, and then it's like Samoa Joe or Wardlow pinning him to becoming a world champion and setting up the whole oh, is he gonna stay with AEW? Is yeah. he going to WWE's twenty Yeah See? I mean there's there's definitely layers to like what they can as do. As much as we give T- TK some cra- some <laughs> crap he does have some great ideas heading into some of the stuff because I think that's a great idea to have. Well, and if he doesn't go that direction, to be fair, you stop, my buddy. Because to be fair, it's also down to MJF as well because he's the one that feeds Tony Khan these ideas for his character. So, I, I feel like that's got to be the next thing is that these mass assailants are going to show up because we haven't. I mean, most recently we, well. Actually, maybe that's why the acclaim and daddy ass weren't there because they're selling their injuries. I just realized that. Remember, they got attacked by the mass assailants. Oh, yeah. Okay, that that makes sense now. Yeah, I forgot about that. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. But um, without going, you know, too much off the back the back burners, we're gonna get onto the sec- the next match. Uh, which is a, card. which is the first match on the main card. It's Adam Copeland, Sting, and Darby Allen facing off against Nick Wayne, Chris Cage, and Luchasaurus. Um, I will say the one cool thing was that all the members of Darby's team had yes. their face painted up. Um, of course, Darby has one side, and Adam Copeland had like almost like he was like the missing half of Darby. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, having one side, the other side of his face painted. So that was pretty cool. Of course, things full face. Um, well, he's always gonna paint his whole face. <laughs> I, I still find it <laughs> hilarious that Nick Wayne was hugging Christian Cage before the match, and it's like, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, actually, beforehand, what about Christian Cage's entrance with all the kids singing? And I was oh, like, yeah. oh, look, they're they're the adopted uh, 
children of Christian Cage, and then he's hugging his oldest adopted kid and Nick Wayne. <laughs> hey, yeah, man, he's a father figure for Nick he's Wayne. A what can I say? For a reason. Exactly. He he he's doing he's doing every uh everybody justice of adopting these kids and making them sing his uh, his theme song, and then yeah, Nick Wayne hugged Christian Cage before the match even started. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, Darby doing Darby things, crazy things running around the ring. Um, This is also a man that's going to be taking time off and training in China to climb Mount Everest. (sighs) Darby, 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 Darby. I I don't know what goes through his mind. This is a man that, like, basically has a fractured uh, shoulder, still wrestling and competing and stuff like that, getting battered around like a, a rag doll in the match. And then you're going to leave for the time being to train to climb Mount Everest? Buddy, that's been done multiple times. I think that you should do something original. I hate to say it. <laughs> um, mm. But, yeah, I mean, Sting can still go. I don't know why Rick F. Flyer had to be out there for whatever reason. He got physical, actually, a little bit. He was starting to kind of punch uh, Christian Cage. Yeah. Um, I think Christian Cage pushed him down or something like that. Yeah, I think, yeah. um, I think that what happened. But either way, look, if he is going to wrestle a match or anything like that, please, for the love of God, Rick, be in good enough physical shape Mm -hmm. as opposed to your quote unquote last match. Yeah. Um and then there was what the Scorpion Death Drop to Adam H- Copeland's um with Adam elbow Copeland, drop. Yeah. Yeah. And then um of course Adam Copeland I think he may do like a double clothesline off the top rope or was that in a different match? I can't remember. It might have been in a different match. Yeah, I think that was on Dynamite if I remember correctly. Um okay. and then um yeah, so Adam Copeland, Sting, and Darby Allen do get the win here, but um, I guess it was a pretty good opening contest um, for what it was. Um, no, talk about a match that got brutal. You know, oh, I, these yeah, men yeah, always yeah. do get brutal. I mean, of course, it wasn't the most brutal match. We'll talk about that later, but um, Orange Cassidy and John Moxley face off against each other for the second time. Um, of course. It was just brutal in their physicality. Yeah, it was very brutal. I think John Moxley gets the, brings the best out of Orange Cassidy because that I Orange think Cass- John Moxley brings the best out of anyone. I, I was gonna say if you definitely because I mean these two men battled, bruised, battered, and everything. John Moxley um, did heavy opened wound, and yeah. then Marty and I, Marty and I always throw a. Uh, a curveball in there. Of course, we don't do DraftKings. I know DraftKings is the official we sponsor of like, AEW. We don't like betting money. We on don't. It, but but we, I was we gonna, always kind of do like, like what's over, under, under, yeah, what's over under on John Moxley um, bleeding. bleeding. I said seven minutes. And I it was about 10. right. Well, only reason why I said that is because, I mean, he had the big bandage on there. So he already kind of was regaming beforehand. Um, and, yeah, um, got wide open and started Bleeding, of course, you know, of course he did. He's John fucking Moxley for a reason. But, yeah, Orange Cassidy, I mean, he was doing his normal stuff, but really was laying in those hits, as always. Yeah, I mean, character development of... John Moxley Cassidy. itself, I mean, was laying in the hits and everything like that. But you definitely know that Orange Cassidy and John Moxley, when they face off against each other, magic is going to happen. Um, yeah. Orange Cassidy, don't get me wrong, he's been a hell of an international champion. As much as I would have loved... Have seen John Moxley win it back because that was my my thing. I was like, I think John Moxley might win this yeah. title back. I think we both predicted that. We both kind of predicted that, but it did not happen. It didn't happen. No, Orange Cassidy retains against John Moxley. Um, he gave him an orange punch, a lot of orange punches in that yeah. match, a lot. Well, Just to get him the, down. The thing about it is like the way that. I was looking at it, I'm like, well, see, here's the thing. Moxley in AEW is somewhat, not entirely, like Roman Reigns. In the fact that, like, 
he's basically mm. treated as the final boss. Except for the fact that John Moxley is willing to lose in right. a big match. No, he is. Something that I mean, Orange could Orange probably... Ca- yeah, right. You know, Orange Cassidy has been the Hall of International Champion. Um, At this point, he's the longest reigning champion, not just in a single reign, but in combined reigns. Yeah. So it's, it's I mean it's sad, but hey, I think that's a title that he can be synonymous to itself. Yeah. Although like in a way it's it would have been nice if he could have been elevated to like a different level than you know being a two time yeah. international champion, but at the same time it's like where else could you possibly go with Orange Cassidy? I mean, would you relegate him to the TNT Championship and have that burden be on him? Like, <laughs> I mean, no. I guess so. <laughs> I don't know. Um, However, I will say that what Christian Cage is doing currently for the, T- the TNT title is actually doing wonders. Right. Um, Working wonders, I should say. Surprisingly, I mean, these two women honestly put on a, a decent match. I don't think the but I don't think it was the best women's match to be truthfully yeah, honest. Yeah, no. I mean, for what it was worth, though, it was pretty good. But um, well, there was one prediction that we got right. Timeless Tony Storm is yet again the AEW Women's World Champion. She is one. She is tied with. AEW. She is tied with Hikaru Shida yes. being a three-time Women's World Champion. By the way, she too. has. Won the AEW World Championship with every single gimmick that she's had. Watch out, she might change it next week. Oh no, she can't do that. Time. I was gonna say over timeless. Timeless Tony Storm. I think she's found something in it because she is over with the fans. Hey man, like she's supposed to be a heel, but I think she's with the fans. She's more like a face. To be honest with you. And there's Here's no the true thing, face and baby heel when the f- fans yeah. like a gimmick, they'll yeah. be a hundred percent behind the thing. it. Here's the thing. With when it comes to Tony Storm now being the AEW world champion again, we gotta start t- tuning into Dynamic Hay and Rampage to watch Timeless Tony Storm. Of course. Um, but I think it was well deserved, honestly, for Tony Storm. I kind of figured it was going to happen. Um, yeah, kind of funny enough that the two title def- the title changes were both mm-hmm. the win- yeah. women's championships, by the way, which is interesting as all hell. But hey, honestly, I like it. I kind of figured that both of the women that did win were going to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this was a hell of a freaking match itself. The Fatal 4-Way ladder match for the AEW World Tag Team titles. Wow, it got brutal. Um, Ricky Starks and Big Bill facing off against FTR, LFI, and the Kings of the Black Throne. Um, Personally, I'm not a big fan of really who won the match because, I mean, they're kind of just gifted the titles with, you know, FTR being hurt, but Honestly, they haven't had a bad reign as tag champions. I mean, it's a t- it, it's a it, big well, title for thing. Big AEW Bill. AEW is trying to establish them as a tag team, yeah, which is not a, a bad thing. No, it's not. And even and you got to look at it this way too. It's Ricky Starks' first official championship in AEW. Right. And it's a pathway. It's, because if you look at um, but also Hangman Adam Page, deals. if you look at Hangman Adam Page, I mean, shit, he started off with the, world, well, the yeah. tag team title, but and then what, look who he went oh. to. He went to the world championship. So, But it's also Big Bill's first championship, like, ever in his career. I know. So, that is huge. That, that's why I'm saying that I think it's more It's actually beneficial. doing wonders. I mean, it's both, both men's. Yes. Well, actually, technically, it's... I mean... Ricky Starks did win a. Well, yeah, he won the FTW title, but that's not. No, no, I'm talking about like even like. Oh, are you talking about NWA, NWA television? Yeah, yeah there's well, still a that, big title yeah. to win. Um, but yeah, you're right. This is Big Bill's first 
major championship. Any where Ricky Starks, yeah. you know, already kind of won that major championship before, even though NWA is not as big as it probably used to be back in the eighties yeah, and all well, that other stuff. Here's the thing: when it rebranded in 2019 and Ricky Starks won the NWA television title, it was a big deal. Yeah, because a lot of people looked at Ricky Starks. I mean, obviously. A lot of people were looking at NWA as like, oh, it's really going to like kick off and actually going to do things. And then the pandemic Right. Happened. I mean, I guess um, so... I don't know if, how much you want to. Um, Do you want to talk about most of what happened in this match, the fatal four way? I mean, of course, we know that. I don't King... really remember much um, of what happened. I know I Brody sorry. King um had the one move on the ladder. I mean, realistic, holy shit, man. I mean, I felt bad for him. Like, he literally, like, kind of like the one, like, went on the one side and kind of just, like, fell down to, like, the, the ground afterwards. I mean, of course, you know, Brody oh, King was big that. old bloodied. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, from the outside, mm -hmm. I, I think it was probably a hard way itself. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, the... I know what you're talking about now with the uh, the of course side was... guide headbutt into the ladder. Yeah. For Mr. Brody King. And then of course you know, Brody King had that. Um, I'm trying to remember what else was happening itself. Um, of course. Um, there was the I think the triple ladder spot when they yeah. were trying to all yeah. go after the tag team titles itself. Um. I will say that, you know, as, as much as, you know, so much that happened in that match. I was going to say, LF, LFI, I mean, Roosh has been kind of a favorite of mine. I think he's a hell of a underrated wrestler, to be honest with you. He's a hell of a wrestler. Um, I don't think he really, was really good too, that he deserves. But, you know, he, he's a really good wrestler, and I would love to see him as a champion one day, honestly. But, Besides um, the Ring of Honor. Ultimately, yeah. I wasn't a big fan of the decision afterwards because, I mean, you have and FTR, you have LFI and Kings of Black Throne. You have two tag teams that have compete that have tagged together, and I mean well, everything are. like that. But like Ricky Starks and Big Bill ended up retaining in this fatal four way tag team match. I don't mind it. I mean, I get it, but like you know, give it to like the Kings of the Black Throne or something like that. Give it to like LFI who have. You know, worked their asses off ever since becoming a faction. You know, you have Ricky Starks and Big Bill retain, and now, like, I'm not mad about them being the tag team champions, but I'm like, the Reigns kind of been, I guess, mediocre kind of in a way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, well, to be fair, I feel like it would be better if they actually fed like some pretty worthwhile opponents to Ricky Starks and Big Bill, but. Right. They just really have Of course, we'll talk about one tag team that will be on the radar for those tag team titles, which at this rate might actually happen. Um, but we got into our next match. Uh, yeah, Julie Hart and Sky Sky Blue and Chris Adler are a uh, triple threat for the TBS Championship. Wasn't a terrible match. Um, I hate to say it. No offense to Julia Hart and Sky Blue. They got outworked by Chris Dadlander <laughs> yeah. in that match. There was no debating that at all. Chris Dadlander is by far a better wrestler than both Sky Blue and Julia Hart. I get it they're young. I get it they're still kind of new to the whole game. But, man, Chris Dadlander has been a hell of a competitor. Um, but, unfortunately, fell short. Julia Hart beats both Sky Blue and Chris Dadlander. The way about it. I didn't think that was going to be the case. I mean, I thought Sky Blue was going to probably maybe help Julia Hart in this match. No, not at all. I, I was shocked. She's still a little, like, conflicted. Yeah, of course. Sky Blue. You know, you uh, thought maybe... She, she also got new theme music and by Butcher Baby. Oh, really? Yes. Crazy. Yeah. Maybe she's a low-class... Metal headway we don't know of. Who the hell knows? Um, but yeah, Sky, um, no, no, uh, Sky Blue, no helping. Um, Julia Hart's Julia Hart, um, goes in there. I think she. Oh, I, I know what it was. I think Sky Blue did the um, the code, the yeah, code that's blue, what it was. and then she did the code blue. Julia Hart and went Julia in. pushed 
Sky out of the ring. Um, and, or no, she pushed Statlander out of the ring. Because I think Statlander hit Sky oh, with the Saturday Night yes, Fever. Yes, that's right. And then, yeah. Pushed her out of the ring and got the, got the victory. See, um, I want to see what's going to come of it. Somehow something tells me that it's going to be Julia Hart and Chris Statlander in a rematch. Yeah. At, full, at World's End. I don't know so much about that. I I honestly did call Julia Hart winning the TBS championship. I kind of figured that was going to happen. It made all the most sense with everything. So two title changes, we kind of got correct on that Mm -hmm. one. Figured it would be the case. But uh, congratulations to to Julia Hart. I I mean, I think she deserves it. She's worked her ass off. She's won a lot of matches to get there. Um I mean, I think her gimmick's kind of over, too. It's definitely yeah. something that's working for her. People love a more witches, of a, man. She's seen People a, love witchcraft. Uh, they've seen a witches. more aggressive side out of Julia Hart, which is yeah. good for you know character development. Do I think that she's a good wrestler? No. By any means, no. <laughs> nah. She still needs a lot of work. But, but the yeah. next moment here. Yeah. Another company's loss is another company's gain. Welcome. Well, he still has to finish up. No, no. What I mean is, sucks for WWE because they, oh, they were yeah. heavy favorites yeah. of Will Ospreay. But I don't <laughs> think they were willing to... Were they really? They probably just wanted him so that uh, AW get him. couldn't get him. Probably. Yeah. Well, guess what? But also, Will Ospreay... Impact, Impact was actually strongly... Considering, like, they offered him a pretty big deal, too, I heard. But it just made sense. I mean, the only company that could give him... The only company that was willing to give him London was AEW because of All In. Right. Well, we all know he's going to be there for All In. Um, Well, he's officially All Elite. He came to full gear to sign his contract. I'm sure Impact TNA could have possibly... Like, because they did come to London for a... Uh, yeah. It was Turning Point. I don't think they it's came a... To, to unfortunately, England it's for not the same point, thing. But yeah. You got... Yeah. Wembley you already have a sta- yeah. stadium that yeah. can hold over at least 90,000 yeah. fans. I was going to say, and, and not to mention... It's Would like, it be a homecoming... Wrestling. Of Will Ospreay, yeah. I think it's gonna sell more tickets if they can stack the card like they did the the first the, the first time they were yeah. in London. I, I think it's gonna sell even more, like we stated on the show before. I think it's gonna sell even more. I think it's gonna really break a lot of records, honestly. Yeah, it's gonna, and I think pre- I think I what was it pre-sale went live like not too long ago. I, I think so. I have no idea. I guess we'll have to catch up on the numbers and everything yeah. like that but um yes he is officially all the and that is gonna be our thumbnail um, and so title now of this episode he's going to have to, he, well, he's, he's gonna, gonna finish up his dates yeah. and his contract with new japan but once that is done then he will be like able to, i would think I mean, the sky's gotta though, be the fucking limit for will osprey honestly yeah. i really do think that you know World Championship or bust for Will Ospreay. I mean, I think there's a lot of... I, th- I think there's some plans, but the, before we get there, what I would like to see, and I know that um, Mark Davis is hurt and we wish for a speedy recovery. It just seems like he can't stay healthy right now and it yeah, sucks. Yeah. But I think once he comes back, I would love for United Empire to go after the World Trios mm-hmm. Tag Team titles. It's kind of written in stone. Yeah, They would be... Hel- they would be one great trio to hold those world trios tag team titles. And I think that's the first thing you should do with them is I agree. Have them win a world trios tag team titles. And then you can focus on a world championship afterwards or whoever is going to be the world champion. Uh, I'm thinking it'll probably be Samoa Joe. Of course. Now mm-hmm. we know that the only reason Joe wanted the tag was MGF is if he could promise him the world title. So I think that they're going to face off at world's end. As far as Wardlow goes, I know that he's, you know, um, he has MJF as a target. I think here's eventually the thing, they though. can face off beforehand. Uh, I don't know. Here, here's what I propose. I feel like they they could turn it into a triple threat. 
Possibly, and that wouldn't be a bad idea. Because then it would guarantee that MJF would not walk out as the world champion. Especially when you got two big men like Samoa Joe and Wardlow. I would think that afterwards you're going to see him take some time off and then really mm. sell the really sell the, the thing that, oh, could he be going there? Could he be staying? And then I think they'll eventually see him. It's like, oh, I'm back. I, you know, I re-signed with AAW and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't know what exactly is going to happen with that. But um, I think we're going to continue on here. Now, there, if there was one match that was brutal, it was this one. And we figured it would be with the kind of story that they've been telling. These two men were going to literally beat the living hell out of each other. Um, Stry- Swerve Strickland and Adam Hangman Page was, in a Texas death match. was probably the most brutal-ass match that we've seen in AEW history yeah. between these two men. Swerve Strickland was bleeding early and bleeding often between and those two men. And man... Blood was just gushing from Sword Strickland's head the whole entire match. So much that Adam Hangman Page thought it oh, would be yeah. good enough to drink his blood. I don't and know what... spit it out. Uh, yeah, that, that spot turned a lot of people away. Um, you know, in a way, I, I can see why, but also, like... I mean, Adam Hangman mm-hmm. Page, even beforehand in the um, thing, is like was talking about, you know, getting personal. It's like, hey, you made it personal. I'm going to make it personal. You know, I'm going to teach you a lesson. I've taught, you know, high school kids for many years. I'm going to teach you a lesson. You know, whoop your ass. And yeah, I'm going to beat your ass, and I'm going to steal your weed. Yeah, well, and then I got to <laughs> steal your weed chant. <laughs> but um, At this point, I still don't know if Hangman stole Prince Nana's weed. He probably was. I don't know. He probably <laughs> did. I don't know. Um, Maybe. But, man, it just... Adam Hangman Page and these two men were beating the living hell out of each other. It was everywhere. I mean, you saw um, barbed wire getting involved in the match. I mean, Adam Hangman Page using it. Um, barbed wire board, uh, table. I'm trying to think of what else was used. Oh, um, glass. Broke, yeah. Um, broken glass. Broken glass. Um, and. Oh, and by the way, uh, Brian Cage got involved in the match, yeah. and yeah. Um, I think he got like a beer bottle broke on a, on his head or something like that, if I remember correctly. Or he got oh, he was out for he was, for a good he was while. Out there, yeah. Um, he was trying to help out Swerve Strickland, um, get the victory too. But ultimately, yeah, that's that's who got the victory was Swerve Strickland and Adam Hangman Page, and it sucks. Like you know, it sucks because you thought maybe. I really strongly thought, even like announcing it beforehand, I thought, okay, Hangman, Hangman Anime Page has to win this match. I think that, you know, he's going to win the match because of everything that's happened. Snow, Swerve Strickland beats Hangman Anime Page twice. I'm sorry, after beating him twice, there has to be something huge for Swerve Strickland afterwards. Yeah. There has to be. Like, either, either, if, whether it be. You line them up to face Orange Cassidy again, um, whether it be yeah, because they fought for the international title, right? Pretty I think sure. so. I mean, there has to be something that's coming yeah. out as you know it for for Strickland because you beat Hangman Page, who's a former World Tag Team Champion right. and a former World Champion. Yeah, there has to be something next for him. It really does. Um, so we're gonna go on to the next match because we're kind of running on time. Uh. Golden Jets and but Young Bucks. I mean, yeah. Um, I thought maybe the Young Bucks were gonna win and break up the Golden Jets. No. 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 You thought maybe in that match that Hangman uh, that Kenny Omega was gonna actually V trigger Jericho. Well, yeah. he he swerved us <laughs> and did it, but ran off the ropes and got, um. Match action instead, I yeah. think. Yeah, it was Matt. Um, and then 
Matt Jackson was doing a one-winged angel on Kenny Omega, yeah. kicked out after two, and then Kenny Omega got the one-winged angel and got well, the one, two, three. Speaking of the Young Bucks, they are no longer doing being the elite. And it's probably because of their whole, like, heel thing. Yeah, and then after their also, loss, I feel like they... they were throwing a temper tantrum, um, using you know, Matt Jackson using yeah. a chair and just bashing against the thing. Um even more so than Nick Jackson, so I, I just don't know. I was gonna say Matt's the one that has like is throwing these temper tantrums. He's the like he's the one that's kind of you know, and even then like Nick is starting to uh, act more level headed. And even then like during the match when uh, Nick had given Chris Jericho a low blow, he like teased that he was about to kick Kenny low also, but he was like, oh, hey, no, no, no. Like, uh, you know, and Kenny was like, were you about to, were you about to like, get me, kick me low? Were you about to kick me low? And Nick Jackson's like, no, no, man. No, no, we're cool. But then Matt, he's like, I'll do it. I do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it so, just seems like, like, I mean... If we're going to see some heel bucks, we really do. And we thought maybe Kenny but Omega was going to... it's going to be... I feel like the Young Bucks are going to be that kind of dynamic where it's like... What if... Matt's more of the bad guy and Nick is more of the good guy in, in the tag possibly. team. Possibly. Which is kind of like how and I the think... bar was when they first got established. Right. And then, you know, Cesaro really started... Uh... Personally, I can see even like... Heyman and Page joining up and turning kind of that. I don't know if that's a good idea. Like, I don't want him to really be a part of the elite anymore. I get it, but like, what is there really left for him to do after losing twice of Sora Strickland? That's the that's the real issue. I mean, you know, it's not really his fault either of like what ha- what is happening with his push or even with his. But you know, yes, um, with the Golden Jets beating Young Bucks. Now they get a shot at the AEW World Tag Team titles. Um, which could happen in World's End. Who knows? Or it could be sooner. But, personally, I... Could we with, see Kenny with, Omega be a two-time Many champion? times, with um, Chris Jericho going at, saying he's going to go after world title, the World Tag Team titles, can it actually happen this time because every time he's That's like what oh gonna we're gonna say. go after Can world tag team titles we're gonna go yeah. after world tag team titles we're gonna go after world tag team titles it never happens but this time they have an actual shot yeah. they got the young bucks shot I, I i think that you're gonna see kenny and chris jericho holding the tag team titles that wouldn't be the first time we saw an odd pairing together i mean even though i know kenny and hey man that's not so much of a weird pairing because of the, the elite and the bullet club and everything well, yeah. like that but um but also, could we see Kenny Omega become a two-time AEW Tag Team Champion? I think so. But this time with a different partner. It, it seems weird that, like, you know, after winning the World Trios Tag Team titles and then the, the AEW World title, that he's going to be reverting back to the AEW Tag Team titles again. But, hey, mm. it's something. Until FTR gets in there and then some oh, whole, yeah. you know, monster tag team titles back to the... Almost act like that he never lost. Yeah. So, getting into the main event now. Yes, this was an interesting twist. Now, yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, so, you know, of course, Jay White, you know, we thought coming out, um, or a- even before it was announced that Adam Cole was going to take it into place. Yeah. Well, we got Tony Schiavone, we have Bryce. Um, yes. Well, even... Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That. Um. We. You know. We yeah. Have, so Bryce Remsburg was yep. with Tony Schiavone, and Jay White was uh, out Jay there White with the world heavyweight title. And we thought, okay, by you know, by because you know, MJF is not physically able to compete in this match. We have no other choice to make you know, J, um, Jay White the champion, White the and champion. then Adam Cole comes out. Adam Cole's music. And he's like, no, I made a promise to Max. Uh, you know, damn it, if I have to step in there and defend his title for him, I will. And then and TK, and then Tony Khan made it official that Adam Hangman or Adam 
Cole was going to be able to was going to defend Max's World Heavyweight Championship, which it's kind of funny. I saw me as like, oh, defending the mm-hmm. ROH World Tag Team Titles, mm-hmm. uh, defending somebody else's title, <laughs> the whole Drake uh, yeah. meme thing, which I find hilarious because yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> you're so quick to being able to defend somebody else's title, but yeah, you're not quick to defend your own tag team title. Um. Mm. But yeah, you, you, we really thought. I mean, he went down, crutches and all, in there in the match. He was gonna be hobbling around on one foot. Jay Way was out there, fully healthy. And then before the match even start started, you hear an ambulance siren and with MJF driving, driving yeah. the ambulance back to the arena, and then you know bandaged, uh, um, bandaged up leg. Yeah, yeah, and all. And then music gets playing. And then, you know, to have the match, he's selling People the leg injury. People are trying to tell him, like, no, Max, no, don't do this. You're not you're not able to compete. He's like, damn it, I'm going to compete. And it was actually a pretty okay, good match. I mean, what, Jay White what, with a nice like, urinagi. Now, now that I'm looking at back at it, it's like, okay, well, why couldn't they have said the same thing to Adam Cole? Like, he's definitely more unfit to compete in that match than MJF, who is literally... Who is selling a fake injury as opposed to Adam Cole, who is selling a real injury? Yeah, true, true. Um, but yeah, um, man, I mean, these two men fought each other. It was a really good main event. Um, it does, you know, I, I really thought there could have been a switchblade era because Jay White can make a strong case of being the world heavyweight champion. I mean, undefeated um whether it be singles or tag team and everything like that um mgf has been on a hell of a role as world heavyweight champion which has been surpassed over a year now so yes. congratulations to mgf um yes he does beat jay white in a hell of a freaking back and forth contest um i don't care if mgf was hurt that adrenaline was going it was pumping through in his bones and his body and everything like that um he finally gets the triple B back after all this time, yeah. after all those months of Jay White, um, or after, you know, weeks, weeks yeah. of him, you know, holding on to the championship, finally gets the championship back. Um, but he didn't win clean. No. He used a dynamite dozen ring and bashed him in the head and got the one, two, three afterwards. Um, and he still retains. The AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Um, uh, I just want to address the people that think that uh, Jay White got buried in that situation. It's like, no. The way that Jay White would have gotten buried is if he lost clean to MJF after his undefeated streak. Yeah. The, the, the win not clean actually does protect Jay White. Yeah, because Big it time. shows that like Jay White cannot be beaten without some sort of like outside interference or mm-hmm. you know some kind of like weapon or whatever. Even after you know talk about who won, can we just talk about how great of that freaking standing urinagi that is? I'm sorry, yeah. but it is a pretty urinagi. Like probably the best urinagi I've seen out of anybody. That man just is a great worker. Um, I think having Osprey in the mix of AEW um, is going to be a great thing, too. Cause you he's have a... four main eventers from New Japan. Kenny Omega, Cody, Kota Ibushi, mm-hmm. Will Osprey, and now or and now Will Ospreay. I was going to say, and, I kind of uh, like it better and that... And I kind of like it better the other one? that... No, I think it was three. But um, either way. Right. I kind of like it better that AEW is going more so after these NJPW oh, no, stars than these former WWE Kenny, stars. White, because no offense to, you know, that I, these NJPW stars will do so much better in AEW because they're, you know, they're used to the pro wrestling side of things. You, you bring in a lot of these former WWE guys, you don't know how they're going to do with, um, you don't know how well they're going to do in the pro wrestling, you know, side of things. But 
I think this is going to conclude this episode of No Final Bell. Please make sure to follow us on social media at Tinkle Sports. It's our channel over there, Tinkle Sports Entertainment on YouTube. You know, please like, comment, subscribe, and follow for more. Also, help, hit the bell notification to get notified. I know YouTube usually doesn't push out a lot of the episodes. Um, of course, usually we have this every episode every Wednesday at 5, but I think this week it's going to be a little bit later. Um, we'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.